just a bloke in a bar. Mate, it doesn't look that bad. Mate, take it off. Are you kidding me? Mate, you look fine. I look terrible. Mate, you look fine. If you were going to wear it, you'd, you, why would you cut your nose out? If you're gonna I didn't cut, that's the whole point. I didn't cut it out. It broke the friggin' skin. You're looking like a Vi Viagra for women. I'm looking like the Sahara Desert at the moment. Hey, I'm telling you, it's not <laughs> that bad. My, you're telling me my beak isn't that big. You're telling me that poked itself out of the bag? <laughs> yes, it broke skin. Oh, maybe it is that bad. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Are no, you I kidding me? Holy shit. Look, I'm, not, I'm just not feeling hot today. I'm not feeling hot today. And Honestly. like, you know, bro, you know, I'm usually so fucking hot every day. You know, I'm so hot. We're talking Walsh areas. We're talking Sualiti areas. We're talking whatever areas you want. Craig Wing even. Mate, your rig's all right. You should have got it out. You don't need the paper bag. Mate, you look good. I'm looking a bit of like, baby oil will sort you out. Bro, I'm looking like a melted candle. <laughs> I look like a melted candle right now. <laughs> now you you're really a melted be, ca candle with a paper bag. Bro, you really want to be Phoenix rolling in here telling the melted candle that he looks all right? <laughs> Is that what? Is that the guy you are? You don't want to compare yourself to me. You look good <laughs> for an average bloke. You're you're a good sort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023 Bloat FC team announcement. Sorry, 2024 Bloat FC team announcement. Uh, and we have been blessed. I'll tell you what. It broke the bank. It broke the bank. We got Gladiator's very own. Phoenix on the show to select the 2024 Bloat FC side this year. <laughs> Welcome, Phoenix. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Phoenix. It's a pleasure to be here. And I think uh, it's a testament to Bloat FC knowing that our graduates could potentially one day become a gladiator. This is the platform we're talking about. I tell you what, there'll be a few Johnsons rising from the ashes, that's for sure. <laughs> all we can ask for <laughs> Mate, look if you can help a bloke out that's fine uh look we've got the great uh look this is this is not officially sponsored by gladiators um but we have the great phoenix here and uh look i thought that we start a song we start the podcast with a song each week and uh this is the song i feel like is very appropriate uh for this week so just if you're driving your car baby and you want to feel a bit sexy if you want to just feel like what it feels like to be a bloke member Close your eyes. If you're driving, still close your eyes. Don't really, but pretend to close your eyes. Don't crash, because we actually had a few people crash last week because they closed their eyes whilst listening. Um, anyway, just get, in, just get in your sexual energy right now and feel like what it feels like to be Cam Murray every single weekend. That's it. There it is. There it is. That's what Cam good. Murray... That's what... Some of the hottest blokes in rugby league look like Sean Johnson. That's what they feel like every single week. Reese Walsh, he came out of the womb to that song. That's what I'm hearing. He's just constantly playing. He's just constantly playing. In his, that's his theme music. If he, has, if he ever walks out for a boxing fight, he's walking out to Tony <laughs> Genuine. Am I about to make love or box? I don't know, but it's, I'm excited. I'm excited. Now, let's just, uh, first of all, brought to you by Bloke Beer. Make sure to grab a case of Bloke Beer, the best beer in all the land. Uh, and look, yes, am I having a bad face day? I am. I'm having a bad face day. Now, some would argue I've had a bad face day since day dot. I disagree. I disagree. Uh, Shandor, the great Shandor, a.k.a. Phoenix. How you going, brother? I'm very good, mate. It's uh, good to be back for the well, announcement of arguably the most important team announcement of the year. Uh, it is easily it the is. most important. Look, I tell you what, the, the, the hype around Bloat FC could not get any bigger. I will be, I will be honest, though, and I, before I say this, Snitches get stitches, okay, guys? So just remember that when I say this. <laughs> Bloat FC is in a terrible financial position, and we owe a lot of money to the underworld. A lot of money to the underworld. So we need your support to go forward. Otherwise, I will probably be in a river somewhere. <laughs> so that's, that's where we're at as a club right now. We do a lot of illegal things. We aren't necessarily very ethical or moral, but we are hot. <laughs> and that really is all that matters it's all that matters i mean look how many hot bad people get away with shit because they're hot <laughs> it is the this way of the world for, way further than parking tickets it, i tell you what <laughs> absolutely does uh now let's get straight into it shall we uh also this show is brought to you by sportsbet now was sportsbet aware that they'd be uh sponsoring a show about bloat fc i don't think they were aware 
Also, were they aware that... You're welcome. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Were they aware that one of their marquee personalities puts a bag over his head because he feels ugly? No, they weren't. Um, but they're supportive. They'll support anything because we are partners. We are partners. So massive thank you to Sportsbet. <laughs> Let's get straight into it, shall we? Let's get number one out of the way. It's a big one. Oh, it's a, honestly, I feel like ones are getting hotter every single second of every single year. This year, we've got guys like Pappenhausen. We've got guys like Ponga. We've got guys like Reese Walsh. We've even got, you know, hot boy drink water with the blue eyes up in North Queensland. You know, fishing, doing all that outdoor stuff, golfing, terrible at it, but looks good doing it. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's walk through the contestants. Now this year, I would argue Kalen Ponga is getting hotter each year. And I think that every Blonde. single year he adds a new tattoo, which also is equivalent to becoming hotter. Like every, every time he feels he's gotten hotter, new tattoo. Thoughts? I like it. I also like the addition of the blonde hair. What I'm starting to see is hotness creates hotness. <laughs> the Ponga Walsh rivalry, all of a sudden, it's a new hairdo, it's a yeah. new Larry Instagram post, it's a new tattoo. And then yeah. you look at Melbourne, has Sua jumped the front gate Ooh. with over Pappenhausen? The mullet is, can that get him into 2024 Ooh. and take a position? You see what I'm saying? I, you're actually right there. Heat like brings how, heat. It is almost like an exponential... Maybe it's some kind of uh, quantum mechanics situation happening mm. right now with hotness. I think it's beyond what we can. Yeah, yeah, it understand. kind of breaks the laws of physics pretty it much. Does. Where hotness does create hotness. Like how that hot is, can you be? I love that hotness creates hotness. That's something to live by. That's something to live by. That's probably Ponga's next tattoo. May get him into the team. <laughs> you know what? If he does, he may get into the team now. To announce our number one, this guy. He has eyebrows that don't quit. He has <laughs> the most beautiful eyes you've ever seen in your life. He should start an eyelash company. He's the envy of every woman across the nation with those eyelashes. Bondi Sands actually milked him for their latest product. That's how, that's how tandy he is. He milked him. <laughs> Reese Walsh was milked. Reese Walsh was milked. Skin. <laughs> there you go. That's our number one. Reese Walsh. Walsh. Well, well done. Congratulations, mate. mate. Well deserved. Well deserved. Getting milked and all that shit. That's just great. That's just great. Now, wingers, that's your specialty, Shandor. That's where, that's where you do your best work. There's almost an overload of hotness year <laughs> after year. <laughs> Which is weird. Why am I wearing a paper bag? It's almost like I should be naturally hot. <laughs> it's always an outlier. Who's on the wing for blood SC 2024? <laughs> Look, this is always a tough one. I think uh, if we look at it, We've got a couple of options and we can't just go for the prettiest winger, yeah. right? There's got to be more. There's got to be a bit more pretty substance. Old. A bit of rogue. Yeah, pretty you know, old. A bit of rugged. Yeah. But We've I will there, say, to kick it off, taking the number two jersey is the curl sensation. Oh. The Jerry Curl of the gods. I know who you mean. DWZ. Oh, Dallin with Tony Zelezniak. Get him in. You know what? Peer -reviewed you can't compete studies, with that hairdo. Peer-reviewed studies have confirmed curls get the girls. <laughs> And that is why he's in it. Also, we are in a lot of financial strife and we need a hair product sponsor. So that's also why he got in. 100%. So to be honest, it has nothing to do with what he looks like. <laughs> we just need money at the moment. From the forehead down, we're not interested. Uh, so not literally. interested. We're desperate. There's a party at the back. There's a party at the back. And also peer review studies do say kills get the girls. Look, I'm going to be honest. I said it wasn't about the looks, but there's been something about that bloke for the last 12 months that I just can't look past. You can't look away. It's, it's, the, it's the whole package. It's the explosive nature of his, of his physique. It's the hair flying down the wing. Mm. It's the aggression in his runs. when he Every time he runs the ball, there's, there's testosterone flowing in that hair. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't shampoo with actual straight testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> there's one thing having a perm on game day, but he comes in, that is shining oh. soul glow. Like... Oh. Perfect. Perfect stuff. It's unbelievable. So, and that's what we we're looking for blokes that are willing to go the extra mile. We've had hot guys before over the last few years. We've had it. And honestly, sometimes that gets boring. You need hot blokes that are willing to go the extra mile. So with Tenny Zelezniak on the sting for us, we'll put him on the right. We'll put him on the right wing. At number three. Oh man, this this does get me up and about. This gets the blood flowing. I tell you what, I tell you what, I, I'm almost speechless because the blood's going to an area in my body. And so my brain's not thinking. <laughs> it's going straight to the big baby. <laughs> I can see it. 
Because this bloke, <laughs> look, centre, it's a very tough position mm. because they're almost the like... total package. Like, they're the complete package. They're not just wingers. They're not just hanging out with footy players. They're actually playing rugby league as well. And this bloke, he has had... When we talk about Dally M seasons, a lot of people have been talking about Kalen Ponga and Sean Johnson. This bloke has had a Dally M season last year and he has been rewarded with number one hottest 100 from the NRL roast, Herbie mm. Farmworth. He is a lock at number three. Wow. Absolutely. And also, like, the thing with Herbie, he shredded out of his mind. That's what I'm saying. It's one thing, you know, there was a few positions, contentious positions. You had our man Josh Adokar coming out, Ooh. claiming that he's eating meat during the preseason. Love but that. Herbie is shredded within an inch of his life. Yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable. I don't think he's eaten a carb in 10 years. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. Um, and so if you're willing to not eat a carb for 10 years, you, you, you deserve that three jersey. And also, it's the accent. Mm, it's the accent. That's right. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, Horses. come on. It, like, when you're getting rated the hottest bloke, plus you've got a hot accent, that's a win-win. Game over. Um, and also, we are looking towards the English market because it's bigger and we need money. Diversify, 100%. Um, so, look, Herbie Farmer, congratulations, mate. Well and number done. four. I'll do four and I'll let you get the other wing, all right? Okay. Or do you want four? No, no, no. Take four. Okay. It's only right that I announce the number five. Okay. This guy, he's a stalwart of Blood FC. Mm. I mean, when we talk about the smoothest skin in the... Oh, I can't even finish that sentence. <laughs> when we talk about the smoothest skin in the game, we're talking retinal. We're talking multiple moisturizers put on his face before 6 a.m. in the morning. Toner, cleanser, we're, we're, moisturizer, we sunscreen. His face has so much liquid in it, you could squeeze it and get a full bottle of water out of it. <laughs> That's how moist he is <laughs> at all times. Sometimes his hair gets wet from how moist his face is. That's how beautiful this man is. It's Joseph Marnie. Ah, oh, of course. Of course Unbelievable. it is. Unbelievable. And it, you look, yes. You, you know what you're going to get. Consistent. He's time after it. time. He's done it. Look, is he betraying rugby league by going over rugby union? That's what Bloat FC is about, though. It's about having no loyalty to anyone. Do you think if he was that hot, he would have been recruited by the French rugby team? Hell you, no. You think France is recruiting ugly blokes? No chance. Like... You think France is like, oh, yeah, we're just going to take this two out of ten from Australia. No. They're going for the smoothest skin in the game. And, and Joseph that Kiwi Mo, accent does nothing for you over there. You're a glamour. You're a glamour. Don't even need to talk. Don't even need to talk. Uh, also, if you want to go deep into the interwebs, you can find this bloke. He's got moves, baby. Oh. He's got moves. I've seen it. I've like seen that. it firsthand. So the reason why he's been selected is he's hot. He's moisturised within an inch of his life. We are looking for a moisturiser sponsor. And also, he's going to be our representative in Europe. Love that. And just to be clear, Bloat FC, this, is, this isn't the hot guy in the corner of the nightclub waving over girls. These no. guys are on the dance floor. So no. that's important. I like to hear that. And it's energy. That's energy, baby. Mm. You can't be... You, look, I feel like sitting on the corner, that's reserved for a very small percentage of people. That's, that's early 2000s kind of stuff. You've got to get amongst it these days. That's right. You've got to get amongst it. Now, onto the wing. Who have we got? Here we go. Like I said, there's a lot of people lining up for this. And... Uh, I'm a big fan of some of the young guns coming through. The sewer light, sewer, Jesus. It's too hot to even say. I'm not even going to announce it. Dom Young's another one. <laughs> sewer Lee. <laughs> now, this is, when you talk about Netflix and chill, this is the snack you want laying next Ooh, to you at night. Oh, I know. Ooh, oh, God. It's the man. Oh, God. The wonder, the myth, the Don't moment. He's returned. Oh. RTS, Blood oh. FC Warriors. You know what? Like, if I'm being honest, we have a lot of fuckboys in our side. I wanted someone mature. I wanted a man in there, you know? Mm. A man that's mature. He, you know, he makes his bed after he wakes up. He responds to your text messages. He shakes your hand with like a firm, good grip. Mm. And, and we just, need that. We, you know, the, the fuck kill marry. It, like RTS is the marry. He's, he's the, the marry. He's a man. You he know? is the man. That's what and, you want. And like, uh, we also need to get guys that get hotter as they age and he is that guy mm. because the last thing we want is our young boys to Vintage. think oh shit when i hit 23 i'm going to become old and ugly um he's proven that's not true and not all of us have a skincare routine like manu so exactly. we've got to rely on looks and you want to talk about genetics rts Oof. has got it and i mean those calves those mm. baby cows oh tell you what we're giving away one vip experience to massage rts's calves <laughs> 
and it's going to cost you just fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> so you reach out to me if you would like to massage RTS's calves. <laughs> All right, at six and seven, I'm, I'm going to do it as a combo. Six and seven, yeah, as a combo because this is really the pinnacle of hotness. This is the general. This is the steer the team around. This is this is the gel the boys together kind of stuff. And it doesn't get much better than this because these guys deliver so regularly. At the same time, a guy like who I'm going to say number seven, he, you know, did he go through a bit of a dip in form in, in, in Blood FC's history? Yeah, he did. But what I love most about my seven is he's bounced back in a big way. Mm. Six and seven of Blood FC, Dylan Brown, Sean Johnson. Oh. If they're staring down at you either side of the scrum, you're excited. You're excited. You're excited. How are you supposed to? Put a play on, two blokes looking at you that hot. It's a distraction. Pure distraction. Pure distraction. Uh, now, at number eight. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. That's right. Let me, I just need to fucking contain myself. <laughs> Has anyone got an ice bath in here? <laughs> All right. At number eight. This is, this was, this, this is surprising to me because eight used to be known as the battler. Mm. Used to be known as the bloke that looked like a smash pie. Um, used to be known as the bloke that potentially could wear a brown paper bag on his head. Or was told to at the very least. <laughs> and we all loved him for it. We were like, yeah, one of the boys. These days though, you know, it might even be the premier position. This next bloke could play Tarzan in a movie. This next bloke has hair that will not quit, it will not stop, and you need to get on it. It's Paddy Carrigan. Oh, pfft. Course. It's Patrick Carrigan. And look, he had a few beers and he was wrestling other blokes. Is that not hot? That's hot as fuck. That's hot as fuck. <laughs> like if you're a chick, okay, so like, like you're a chick or a guy and you're just having a few shandies with the Sheilas, you're just having a few shandies and you're like, oh, I'm just having such a great time. You see Big Paddy, his hair flying around on a grass in the middle of Brisbane, completely intoxicated with beers. That's hot. You know what that's nearly as hot as? Revving your car when you see a chick. <laughs> <laughs> wolf whistle wolf whistle totally inappropriate and yeah. you shouldn't do it you should actually leave them just leave them be carrigan rip shirt man bun carrigan, out that's hot man bun wrestling with a guy half your size on the grass that's hot that's hot and if you're a girl you're gonna be like i can't st i can't stop it i can't help I but be attracted it. to that's that bloat energy that is bloat energy that's, that's what we're looking energy. for and then all the boys stacking on like i'm telling you the girls watching that would be like oh my god that is hot <laughs> You may as well be revving your engine next to me constantly. Because we all know that chicks love this is when what you they want. rev your engine next to them. Works every single time. Every time. Every time. I, the amount of blokes that come to me go, man, if you're ever struggling to get a woman, rev your car next to them. I'm like, oh, I never thought of that. Great advice. Uh, <clears throat> all right, you do number nine. Well, look, this one, uh, I will say, it's probably the position that, is lacking a little bit of hotness. Yeah, look. There isn't a massive amount of competition. Look, let's just say they're battered and bruised. Mm. We'll just say that. Mm. They put their head where others won't. Yeah, which can be a good thing. Yeah. If you think about it. True. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> there's rumours that our, uh, our nominee here uh, has strategically... Oh. Requested okay. the number nine jersey this year because of the lack of competition. Ooh, rumors. Rumors. Okay. Now, taking all that aside, he's a notorious hot boy. Oh, he's, like we're talking he, we're talking the bandit of Bondi Club. That's stuff. right. He's 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 partnered with Hot Boys. He's built a brand around being a hot boy. It doesn't matter if he's injured, playing. Not even in the side, he's still one of your hottest players. He predates Blood FC as a hot that's, boy. That's what I'm saying. He makes others hot. Yeah, uh, hot. Yeah, hot that's makes right. people hot. Yeah, I like that. See, the, that's where the peer-reviewed study comes in when mm. you know it's true. The data doesn't lie. When you can say it again, and I agree, that makes it true. Um, Connor Watson at number nine, the hot pirate. Of course, the hot pirate. <laughs> I saw him out once, and I honestly reckon he had, he had like, a, he had a, a, a t-shirt on, a button-up tee. And I reckon, look, I can't confirm or deny, I reckon the top four buttons were fake. <laughs> so I reckon he's rolling out. Show buttons. They, 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 so he can say, oh yeah, they just, oh whoops, they came undone. Mm. But he's such a hot boy, they're never going up, baby. They, he walked out the house like that. 
that's what a hot pirate, pirate does. He's deceptive. He can, he can bamboozle you. He can apply for positions that don't have much depth and just guarantee his spot. That's the hot pirate. That's Connor Watson. Congratulations, mate. Oh, Couldn't be nine. more proud. All right, this next bloke. Do you want to do this next bloke or you want me to do it? <sighs> Go for it, mate. Listen, I've I seen one of the most the – this is when you know you are – This a, is an evolution, this one for oh, me. This is the next – like, if humans are to evolve to the next step, this is it. This is it. Like, you put me next to him, I look like a Neanderthal. <laughs> Uh, Boys become a man here in Bloedefs. Oh, yeah. This oh, is yeah. a great example. And I, I don't know if I could ever find the photo again, but it was an all-time photo. This is how hot this guy is. So he was getting interviewed by a journalist the other day, and on the TV it looked they, like they were of a height. Someone took a picture of actually them getting him getting interviewed. The journal was literally standing on a box. <laughs> That's how hot this guy is. That's how much of an alpha dog, six foot six of pure unfiltered testosterone <laughs> Tino Faso oh. Malawi oh my god oh wow 115 kilos of Samoan oh. muscle and heat pure power like seriously it, it does not get much better than that oh just a beautiful bloke and that hair oh the hair it just doesn't stop it doesn't stop it's done in wonders it has oh mate that's number amazing. 10 love that all right at number 11 do you want to do 11 Eleven's your man. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. I was <laughs> hoping you would say that. This guy, he reminds me of a love interest of a 1990s rom-com. He's the your guy. love interest? My love interest? Potentially, mm. potentially. Uh, he's the guy that when you were in high school, the girl that you liked had a poster of him on mm. her wall. That's the guy he is. He's got a smile that could cure any malaise. <laughs> He's got a twinkle in his eye that'll brighten any day. <laughs> it's Jordan Ricky. Ah. He's wow. just hot. He's just, he's just hot. One of Queensland's hottest men. Unbelievable. He's up there at the Glamour Ridiculous. Club. And he knows it and we like that. We love that. He's shredded out of his mind. Gets through his work, uh, like he's got a bit. There's a bit of pizzazz about his the way he dresses as well, and also he's in that hot crew at the Brisbane Broncos, oh. where, you know, we, we spoke about it the other day. Paddy Carrigan was dressed like a ex jiu jitsu pr pr practitioner that currently works at the library. That's what he was dressed as, and and I said it in the comments section. He Paddy Carrigan looked like he'd been working and slaving away at the library for the last ten years because he lost world champs as a youngster. And he promised himself he would never, ever, yeah. never, ever go back to jiu-jitsu. But he finds himself, the library's getting robbed, and he has to wrestle his way out of it Life to the girls he loves. instincts. That's what he looked like. And that's what, that's what those blokes are rolling around like, jiu-jitsu librarians. And that's hot. <laughs> that's real hot. <laughs> <laughs> and Ricky set the standard for body fat percentage with a forwards now in Blood FC, hasn't he? Jesus. He's really set the standard. I have never, another guy that very, I'd be Single very surprised digits. if he's had a carb. Ever. I'm very surprised. Okay, this next bloke, he's been knocking on the door. Mm. He's been knocking on the door and there has been a lot of controversy about this next guy on me not selecting him the last few years. But he's, he's paid, look, I, when I see talent and I know that they could be big for Bloat FC, I don't want to rush their development. No, and it's important. Players, you know, they look at the off season and they commit, okay, what do I want to improve my skills? I want to put on a little bit of size. This man Oof. is looking to, he's just set a clear goal. 8% body fat, 7% body fat, 6%. And he will not stop he until he's stop. selected. Yeah. And here we are. He's unbelievable. And, and you know what? The thing with him as well is that he hasn't complained once. Mm. Usually, hot boys are notorious complainers. This bloke has just put his head down, his bum up, and he's got after it. Scotty Sorensen. Oh. Scotty Sorensen. Chiseled out his mind. It, Jaw, like the, abs, seriously. Quads. If he if he stood still for long enough in Greece, they would think he was a statue. <laughs> <laughs> Do I know where that came from? No, I don't. <laughs> this next bloke. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's the captain. You already know. We don't need to say who this next bloke is because he's the captain. He's the captain. He's Mr. Courageous. He's humble, way too humble for my liking. Like, if you're that hot, have a bit of arrogance, baby. Let it out. Nah. But you know what? He's a better bloke than me. He's a better bloke than me. And another guy that, you know what really has, has made him stand out again this year? It's actually his poise in interviews. Mm. Just that he's holding frame. He's all about holding frame. Now, what does that mean? Very nebulous term. Unsure what it means, but it sounds aggressive and dominant. It does sound alpha. <laughs> Humble and hot. Humble, hot, holds frame. That's, it's the big three. That's the big three. Cam Murray. Oh. Cam Murray. Of course. Um, look, mate, you're guaranteed a spot. You're guaranteed a spot. The captainship is taken away when you retire. Put it that way. The only guy that walks into the side each year, it's Cam Murray. It's Cam Murray. At number 14. You want to do 14? This is your man. This is yeah, your man. Yeah, it is. It is. He's also my man, but he's your man. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, not, don't know if this one has much competition in itself. I'm not saying there's not a heap of hot boys looking for that number 14 spot, but when you talk about how many bloat FC players can be compared to the world's hottest men? Not many. And when you think about the curls, the smile, the elegance, the poise... You think Nico Hines. Oh. And he just does it with style. He does. I love it. And just his ability to keep his hair wet constantly, that's a skill set. That's a skill set. And he doesn't lean on it. It's not about fashion. It's just pure, young, hot boy good looks. He, look, 10 things I hate about you, that's him. That's him. 10 things I love about you, Hines. <laughs> 10 things I love about you. That's, that's the vibe we're going with. You know, cute, girls crying, Yeah, he's got the cute hearts. factor. You're right. You know, it's, it's got everything. He's going to tell you a poem. Mate, write me, I'll write you a poem, Heinze. <laughs> um, okay, this next one. This next one, this is special to me. This one's special to me. Because there's more to hotness. Like, this bloke's hot. But sometimes you need a bit of spice. Mm. Sometimes you need some, a bit of pizzazz. Uh, a bit of je ne sais quoi. A bit of just that something special. Something different. Because, look, if, if, I'm, if I'm being honest, if you're just dating the same every time, it's just boring. Mm. And also, there's a lot to learn in different cultures, in different, just, there's something special about this bloke. I wanted a bit of Lebanese flavour. Ooh. Alex Twell. Ooh, wow. I, it, look, I wanted, I wanted that pizzazz. I wanted to live life. I want to get the, I want to get the music playing. I want, I want to sing with my friends. I want to have fun at parties. That's the kind of stuff I want. And Twelve brings it. I love it, and he's proven himself. Think about how hard he has worked to just score a try. Oh. Think about what he'd do for you if he was your boyfriend. Hundred, unbelievable, mate. I, bro, how much do you think he waxes? What do you reckon? Three times a day, at least. Like, like seriously, if you're waxing three times a day, you deserve to be in Blood FC. <laughs> This next bloke, look, we're all like, attraction, it's a multifaceted. You can yeah. be attracted to many diversity. different things. You need, you need variety, yep. you need different, different vibes. And this guy there is just, when you talk about rugby league, testosterone, feeling safe and secure, mm. this next bloke brings that. Corey Horsburgh. Oh, wow. You need a fiery red to fire things you do. up. You do. You do. You do, you need a fiery red. red. sensation. Okay, this next guy. Huge smoky. Huge smoky. <laughs> now, I think for the last few years, and this is my bad. Yeah, this talk is, me through it. Yeah, this is my bad. This is my bad. Um, the last few years, we've been missing one thing and one thing only. And maybe this is why we're hugely in debt. Maybe this is why we're connected to underworld figures around the country. Maybe this is why we have a huge tax bill with the ATO. But we were missing a cutie patootie. And this guy couldn't be more of a cutie patootie if he tried. <laughs> talk, me, talk to me. T tell me the characteristics of a cutie patootie. Tell well, me, what like, are they? Like sometimes girls want mm. the cute giggly smile. Like a mm. guy, oh, he's so cute and sweet. Like mm. I just want to hug him. Cuddly? A cuddly mm. cutie patootie. This is that guy. <laughs> Who is it? And, you know, and also me being 1 16th Asian. <laughs> my son also half Asian. This is my Asian brother, <laughs> Gordon Chen Kum Tong. <laughs> At number 17, welcome, brother. Welcome. Diversity. I love That's it. Right. 
it, there's beauty in all facets of You heard the man, we're in debt. We're trying to tap into all markets. All markets and also beautiful. It's universal, baby. Mm. We're all beautiful. We're all beautiful and, and, and lovely and a cutie patootie like Gordon Chan Kum Tung. Are you serious? Stop it. Just that Are name. It rolls. Kum Tung oh, rolls off the tongue. Jeez. And look, as I said, massive smoky. He's come out of nowhere and he's just taken it. And I think he'll take it with both hands. Welcome. I think he'll take it with both hands. Welcome, brother. That is your 2024 Bloat FC squad hotter than ever hotter than ever yes some controversial you know Ruben Garrick not in the side mm. very close Suwali'i very close not in the side I mean very con Kalen Ponga Pappenhausen yep. there are so many boys that could have made it but unfortunately at Bloat FC we've got bills to pay for one and also we are ahead of the curve when it comes to beauty and some some of these hot guys aren't going to be hot until we show them that they're hot it's true you know what i mean it's true and and so look we would love to know in the comments section what do we got right what do we got wrong we are more than happy to sack any of these boys at the drop of a hat mm. we have no loyalty to any single one of them <laughs> <laughs> there you go oh. now on wednesday march 13th Rising super band and weight contender Sam Goodman returns to the ring in hopes of continuing his run for a world title shot when he faces Mark Schlieb. Schlieb's uh, in the co main event. Uh, fan favorite Isaac head, head splitter Hardman will face Venezuelan Andre Saavedra. Uh, order, ex order exclusively on main event or with KO Sport. You don't need a KO subscription to order. Event details are in the show notes. We'll have a link. And this is Aussie Boxing, guys. Some of the best Aussie boxers in the country. Um, and these these cards are the cards where you get banger fights because you've got young guns coming through the ranks that are willing to lay it all on the line to you know progress in their career. Uh, the, Go the Goodman Schleaves fight is going to be super interesting because Schleaves has been talking it up. Goodman, uh, much classier fighter, but sometimes these, you know, one punch can change a fight. That's the, like the difference between combat sport and like footy in that yes. is that footy doesn't have one punch can change a fight. Yeah, it's true. And like, whereas with boxing, just one thing can go your way, the whole thing changes. And the worst thing is like, <clears throat> hey, next week it's game day again. You got a week to wait. Yep. Boxing, no. you're what, three, six, nine months oh. in the hole sitting with it, oh. thinking about it. My God. Oh, no, knocked out. Uh, um, so yeah, and also guys, this is Aussie boxing. So if you get behind it, the more good old Aussie oh, boxing we're gonna have. March 13th, I'll uh, be down there. Also, make sure to order the Tim Su fight. Let's go. Late March, ooh baby, I cannot wait. Uh, I'll wait till Monday, might have an announcement on Monday in regards to what's happening there, but we may be getting a chat with Timmy Zhu uh, before the fight or you know over the next couple of weeks. Um, anyway, so brought to you by K, make sure to grab that fight uh, and also support Aussie boxing. Uh, now, big news, Sua Fa'alongo re-signs re are with the Storm for five years. Wow. Five years. Now, what's, what's, surprising, not, what's surprising for this for me is not necessarily that he's signed. That's not surprising. It's the, what are the ramifications of that? Because no, there's no way a fullback of his quality is signed on a five-year deal unless he's starting in, in the near future. And there's also no way Pappenhausen is staying around to play 14. A fullback of his quality that wouldn't be play that's not starting at fullback. What do you reckon about the whole thing? Well, look, let's just look through it. A very realistic lens. Mm. Pappenhausen's a gun on his day, but you can't deny the very unfortunate incidents mm. that have happened over the last 12 months. Both of those injuries, you literally, he, he knows, the club knows, everyone knows that if that was to happen again, your, your hand's been forced. Yeah. Now, you've got this young kid who you can lock up, and I'm pretty confident it would have been a pretty advantageous deal for the Melbourne Storm. Yeah, They're smart. They're like, Look what they've done. Year after year, they've developed this crop. So I think it's a it's a play where they're just backing themselves both ways. If Pappenhausen kills it, still I am, I, I find it a little bit weird. I don't know when Pappenhausen's off contract. That's probably the kicker. Yeah, if, if he is off out, contract soon. I think it's soon, 27. Right, but like... With both of them fresh, what do you like? It's a strange doing? situation. Nah, end of twenty five. There you go. That makes perfect sense now. There's the wow. there's the conversation. So, so they, yeah. they backed themselves. Yeah. So they're basic basically they've sent the message of we know we feel far longer will be ready at the very late like at the latest twenty six. Um Yeah, geez, that's hey, tough. Hey, look, on we've seen it a million times over with the Melbourne Storm. You Get to the peak of your powers. Most of these players have come from 
they didn't come here as a superstar to the yeah. storm. So he come in as a young kid, get an gets an opportunity, mm. wins premierships, is on a squillion dollars, has set himself up for life, and it gets to the point where they bring the next generation up. Mm. Unfortunately or fortunately, his next move will be to go to another club. He'll have success. He'll add value, but the next person will rise, and that's just how it goes. Oh, it's so ruthless. It's crazy. Though. It's so ruthless. It just like, I, you know, I understand he's had injuries last yeah. years. I get it. I yeah. get it. But he's just been so good for him. What do you do that yeah, when the, the, a superstar comes in? It's like, oh, it's so ruthless. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Look, maybe maybe he does get resigned. Like we don't know. Maybe no. they've got a plan where they want. Wrote, maybe Bellamy's got a cram, but let's just assume that they've basically said to Pappy, you know, your Fa'a Longo is going to replace you either next year or the year after. <clears throat> I would assume that if another club came to Pappy now and they said, maybe not now, but for 25. Security, yep. I reckon Storm would be like, it's okay if you explore options. Well, be I reckon Pappy would yeah. have to look at it, wouldn't Mate, don't you think? If I'm the Raiders... Mm -hmm. I know, oh, look, I know going down, to living in Canberra, some players don't want to do it. I think Pappy would do it. He's obviously, yeah. obviously lived in Melbourne already. I know Melbourne's different, but you know what I mean? It's not in New South Wales or Queensland. Yeah. If I'm the Raiders, I'm throwing big coin at mm -hmm. Pappy. Big coin. Not a long, long contract yet, but big coin to get him to the club. If he gets through that first 12 months, maybe then there's that it, like there's an option that it extends for a certain amount of time because he he's exactly what they need. If yeah. they Imagine the Raiders side with Pappy in it. I'd love to see that. Um, and like what he would bring oh, we're talking about the evolved version of him like yes he's a try scoring machine yes he's creative but what he would bring in terms of strategy and skill yeah. and tactics and the dynamics he would add to that team but like you said for Melbourne it's a win-win Yeah. if Pappy kills it I still think you get to that point in 25 where he gets offered more money than Melbourne would be able to play with. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like his his hand would be forced in that respect because he'd get some great opportunity somewhere else. There's so many clubs that could use like if, if, I'm not sure what the Bulldogs caps looking like, but even I'm the sure Bulldogs they can't are, get him. Oh. <laughs> well, when you look at their cap, like when you look at their playings though, they don't really have. They got no million dollar players. The cap's gone up. Yeah. They got no front rowers. Yeah. They got no big seven, no big fullback. Yeah, true, 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 actually. Like, oh, Pappy, they would be. Because <laughs> then that solves, then you go, Critter's 100% playing centre. Yep. Um, that's, then they just basically need a good seven to stand up and they're good. They're good to go. But then you've got um, Joash, Papa, uh, Joash Papali. There's a youngster coming through. So it'll be interesting what happens to him. But there are plenty of clubs. Look, the one that springs to mind, though, is the Canberra Raiders. If I'm Raiders, I am ringing I'd him. I'd love to see him in the Immediately. Green. I'd be ringing him immediately and asking, what's what's the go? Because the Raiders surely have money in the cap. Mm. Otherwise, the, the cap is so unbalanced. So when you look in their spine, yep. they don't even know who's going to be the one, six, and nine. Yeah. Um, but it shows you, man. Look, I, I, I get it from all angles. I get yeah. it if you're Pappy. You understand yeah, it. Yeah. I get it if you're Pappy and you're feeling like, are you serious? Like I want a premiership for the comp for this uh, club, but I also get it. From, I, don't know what it. <laughs> I get it also if you're the Storm because you're like, mate, it's been two years. Like yeah. I, you've been incredible, but like it's been two years. And also we've got this young guy who, at the very least, we know he's going to be a good NRL player. Like I'd be very surprised if he doesn't become a just a good NRL player. But his potential is like a great NRL player. Yeah ironic about that is is that Pappy has already proven he's a great NRL player mm. so he you know there's a there's a hey, hey let's not compare them to either like close at the moment. Sua is a freak yeah. talent yeah. but Pappy you're talking about someone who he's done fits it. into their system yeah you and he's I mean? done it he's, yeah, he's what actually mean. proven year on year to be one of the better fullbacks in the competition yeah. there is a universe a, a freaking universe between potential yes and actually he's arguably doing the it. best player before he got that serious injury he was putting pressure on T for the New South Wales jersey so I get it. I get it from all areas. And you, look, put it this way: if if Storm, if we found out, let's say we were sitting here and Storm were like, you know what, we're going to let Far Longo go. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people are like you are crazy. No, filthy. Whereas this, I can, I get it. I feel, I feel really sorry you for that. You can't Pappy, do that though, knowing the last two years, like you'd be. It's a ridiculous business move. So like risk. the risk, yeah. you have to. So you have to cover yourself. I just think it's a win-win. If you're a fan, win. Yep. If you're sewer, great. And if you're Pappy and you play well, someone's going to come knocking on yeah. the door. It's not the ideal situation, but there is a win for everyone. Yeah, true, true. Um, now uh, round. Uh also, for, for the for the listeners, uh, Shandor will be joining us every Friday from now yes. on. Yes, so stoked! <laughs> it's so so. This is this means so much to me because obviously, 
this is how it all started, baby. Yeah. This is how it all started all those years ago. We spoke. You're like, I want to do a show. I was like, blah, blah, blah. And then we come up with a name. That's where Bloke in a Bar literally came from. The name came from. Hey, was crazy. thinking I was, about naming a show. I saw before. You sent me a camera. I was like, just go to any random bar in Thailand and film a, film a segment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I'll, I'll go over the story quickly for the <laughs> audience that may not know. But So basically, we spoke. After I was interviewing players, we spoke and we were like, you were like, we should do a show where we both talk about footy. And I was like... I'm not confident enough to talk about footy yet because I don't want to bag any of the boys yeah. and I just don't feel confident enough that I could do that. And you were like, well, well, I'll do it. And I was like, all right, well, what if, what if I give you the camera, you send me the footage, you were obviously living in uh, Thailand? Thailand, yeah. Thailand. Oh, I don't know why I think Bali for some reason, <laughs> you know, Thailand. And I, so I sent you all that stuff and, and I forgot his name, but that guy that really helped us, what was his name? There was a guy that helped us, I think, get the, the gear over there. Oh, anyway. yeah. Um, I want to say really Peter, Peter does sound familiar yeah. really good bloke helped yeah. us out so I sent all the soft boxes the lighting and then you would just go into a random Thailand bar <laughs> and film like you talking about footy you'd send me the footage I would edit it all and put it up so holy wow you know what's funny is like my initial idea is oh maybe we could film at a beach each day and I was like nah that's not really and that's when I come up with the name bloke in a bar. I was like, oh, in a spa, sports, you're sitting around with your mates, you're talking footy, whatever. And then the makeshift bar you had in your lounge room. Oh, <laughs> had the TV hanging up from like a, a, literally just a pole, a pole <laughs> that was balanced on two cube uh, shelves. <laughs> so dangerous, so dangerous. Um, anyway, so, so far out. And then the reason why I didn't keep going is because like obviously you were dedicated to getting back to playing in NRL. Yeah. And so you just... It just didn't work. Like when you when you're that focused in, yeah. and also also you had to like live your life. Like you had a business to run. Yeah. Because you were not at uh, F45. Yep. In Melbourne. Yep. So you're trying to run a business, trying to do content, trying to make it back in the NRL. Yeah. Just too much. Way too much. Uh, and then yeah, and then now tried tried to do it again, but work got in the way. Yeah. But this time, we're back, baby. Hey, we're Friday, back. my man. So good. <laughs> so good. Uh, all right. Round one kicks off on Sunday. Uh, reminder, watch all these games on KO, guys. Uh, but speak to me. What are your thoughts heading into round one or round zero in Vegas? Oh, it's pretty cool. I mean, what a way to kick it off. Yeah. But there were, there's been murmurs of America and getting ourselves over there, playing games over there for mm. years now, even, even when I was playing. But the opportunity for the boys to showcase the sport over there, I mean... Part of me is thinking like, what's going to happen? Who's on the night out? Is there going to be controversy? But at the end, the other part is like, we're finally bringing rugby league to America. So for those four teams, how pumped would the boys Ooh. be to get the call? Maddie, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm I'm just pumped because um, because South are back. Like we're the first game of the year. It's not it's not like it's pretty uncommon to have your team um, open the season. So yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm just I've I've been counting down these days pretty much since New Year's Day. So. So, so keen. are you feeling more confident or less confident that you'll get the win on the weekend? You know what? I watched NRL 360 last night and uh, just looking at how happy and relaxed and just Latrell's whole vibe, mm. it, it just made me confident immediately. Oh, I feel uh, the okay. same way, Matty. I, I, I'm, I feel good about South. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually getting nervous. Really? I think there might be a bit too, of ambush. Too comfortable. Like, no, no, not, not too comfortable, but like when I look at Manly's roster – and you've got DC, their big, big mm. game player in the halves there. Mm. Then you've got Brooksy helping him. Tommy Turbo, the return. We've got to remember, like, mm. this guy is good. Like, Do you take anything away from the little seven-day runway into the game? Like, the boys parking up in Vegas. They're working. They're in the gym. Yeah. The other lads are, you know, living the Cali dream for a few days before rocking into Vegas. Ooh. I know. I like the – I like Matty's point. A relaxed Latrell is probably a great Latrell, but yeah. – yeah, you just changed my mind instantly with that chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, it's, I, I think it's going to be a cracker game, though. Tommy Turbo, but I've, I'm, I'm tuning in just to see that. I think that's the thing. I think people are forgetting Tommy Turbo at his best. That's like e arguably equal to Trell. So, and there's very few fullbacks that can equal Trell at their best. Now, obviously, Trell has more runs on the board with everything he's achieved in the game, but geez, that Tommy Turbo return game. <laughs> He's had a whole. He's had a whole preseason. He's, he's hungry. Oh man, it's going to be a cracking game. Um, I got to say, I, I just saw pictures like and small videos of the NRL 360. Um, geez, they did it well. It looked mm. bloody cool. Mm, it did. It looked real, like real. Like put it this way, it looked like the American NFL sports shows that you see when they do the live shows in front of the audience. And some of the numbers, like I, I was seeing Guru's uh, story recently 
about it must have been an NRL show or something like that. Mate, it was chockers. Yeah, chockers. Have you seen any of that? Yeah, there was people everywhere. I think Buzz Rothfield actually just posted a photo on Twitter. I'll put it on the YouTube. Um, I don't know what they're doing today. It could be some of the captains run. It could be just a fan fest. But there are people everywhere. Hey, everywhere. So many people would have travelled over for that. I hope it's a success. And like, yeah. look, there's going to be a lot of naysayers that are ready to poo-poo the event and just be like, oh, what a dumb idea. We wasted all this money. But it's like, you've got to try, you've got to risk something. Do we just want to stay stagnant? What is it? What do you think? What's the vision? What's the dream? Do you think anything can come from it long term from us exposing ourselves to that market? Well, it's a betting betting market. So mm-hmm. betting's oh. opening up all through America. Yes. And so if, if they just get a bit of the betting market over there, the money that will come into the game will be like a joke. If they can somehow, some way, it won't be this year, yeah, might not even wow. be next year, it'll be maybe, because it's a it's five a year point. deal, I'm pretty sure. Mm. If they can just get a sliver of it, it'll so be- So you're saying, if we can capture an audience over there and they're interested or in some way invested in our sport and they're betting on it, that's the win. So I don't yeah, sure, wow. they may have got a deal done, um, but basically, I think usually the deal is is that any betting on the NRL, the NRL take a, a percentage of that. Mm. So they so every time a bet's made, I think they'll get a percentage mm. of that bet. It's, it's something like that. Yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. There'd have to be so so the, I guess the argument would be if you can entice enough betters, even just punters over there that don't, they might not even enjoy the game, they just want to bet on something new. Uh, if you can get enough of that on there, then you'll generate like. It's 350 oh, million or something over there we're in America. Launching, we're launching airlocker there. Like, but the, the, the population of LA County is the population of Australia. That's, Think about that. Oh. That's like just insanity. LA County. That is insanity. <laughs> and so, if yeah, if they can somehow break into the betting market over there, we could have no one turn up to the game and it will be easily worth it. Mm. I, think, I think we've got to judge this on its third year. You know yeah, what I mean? Okay. I reckon, see if we, yeah, see if it does capture the American audience, yeah. they start getting around it. Yeah, good point. And, and also, like... If, if the game does turn out to be a success, think about how many more people are going to go next year. It's like Magic Round. Mm. You, you, this, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Magic Round just gets bigger and bigger because everyone's got FOMO and everyone's like, fuck, look how good that looks. I think it'll be the same with Vegas. If this goes off with a hit, in year two and three, I think you'll find where it will just sell out mm. because people are like, we have to be a part of Round Zero. You know, We have to be over there in Vegas. Look at all the shows. Look at all that you get to... Because it's also... Yeah, I love that. Because it's like... Because it's a, a smaller population of Aussies over there and league fans over there, you've probably got more access to the big personalities in rugby league. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 that's true. Because it's like a little community that's mm. migrated over there. Mm. They're all together. And then they, you know, whereas in Australia, it's like everyone, you know. And even then on their part, they're a lot more invested. They're probably a lot more interactive and engaging. Yeah. They, 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 they would have been told to. Exactly. They would have right. been told to, guys, you need to be fully, you know. I love open. that. And now it becomes an event start of the year. That's um, so yeah, look, I, I think it's great that we're we're trying things. If it fails, look, for every if nine There's things no loss, yeah, if nine things fail, it just takes one to explode, and it makes that nine worth. I mean, that's how investment firms literally work. Like capital, big investment capital firms, they invest in like a hundred businesses, and they don't expect them all to you know mm. succeed. They just need like ten out of the hundred to go big, and that pays for the rest of them. And it's similar to having cracks like with the NRL, if this if this one, you know, crack works, it might pay for the last failed whatever, you know, things that we've tried. And it's like the the real estate, let's say we buy five properties, one of them fails but four of them work, or even two of them go huge and three of them fail, it's it's worth it kind of thing. Mm. So you just, I think you just gotta try it. You just no, gotta I try it. I love that though. That bigger picture has changed my perspective of it. I kind of just seen it as a bit of a, a hype game. But yeah. to build something bigger off the back of it, create an event, start of the year, magic round sort of vibe. I love that. Oh, it could yeah. be huge. It could be huge. And and like we do have a good product. Yeah. We have a good product where you just have to watch a, essentially a set of rugby league. And anyone that like loves a lot of collisions and physicality is gonna be like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. That's the market. The American market is arguably the only market that we have an opportunity. Like they've got NFL. We know yep. the variation between pads and helmets. They think what we do is crazy. Mental. They love it. combat sports, MMA, UFC. Rugby, rugby's semi big in their yep. uni, so they understand rugby yep. league to a degree. And it's like surely they like it's no stop starting. Yeah. You know, even for our sport, you compare that to rugby. I think rugby actual game time is something like thirty minutes. Oh, of really? the whole sport you know oh, what i mean boy. ours goes to like 50 55. yeah yeah so like surely they're loving the action yeah you sure. spend you spend three and a half hours at nfl game oh that's it's insane wild. I, yeah like, and they love it yeah like, and i get it you get around the day and it's yeah, mad but it's like a big day fuck. Uh, i cannot wait all right who are you going roosters bronx oh that's Bro, tough i'm so nervous on this that one that is tough 
It's like when you actually look at Bronx side, it's so young, man. Yeah. It's so young. Yeah. Whereas when you look at the Rooster side, you've got blokes all across pretty much in their peak, except for some of the younger outside backs. I mean, I feel good about the Roosters. I feel good about the signings. I feel good about the players who didn't have the season they needed to have last year. There's mm. no way. I'm talking high-caliber players. Mm. There's no way they're coming into this year and letting it down again. Oh. So I just don't see a Trent Robertson coach side coming in and not playing to the talent that they have yeah, again this year. So I'm, I'm saying they're coming in red hot. You reckon win? Yeah. Right, look, I'm going I'm going Broncos because, look, I, this is the way I think the game will plan out, pan out. And look, it's very hard to predict, but I'm just going to – super physical first 40 mm. where Roosters get on top, where it's just like, holy, they've come out of the gun. Like second half is where Broncos bounce back, where they get into their flow of things and the speed of the game increases – and that's where they probably put on their points. That's that's how I think the game will go. Mm. I'd, I'd be very, very surprised if the Broncos blow the Roosters off the park mm. in the first 40. Mm. I think that's more of a, what the Roosters will do. They'll be hyper physical to try and intimidate the younger pack. Uh, but I, then I think that when the speed of the game picks up is when Reese Walsh just comes into his own and just takes a piece. I think you're right about the start of these two games. Like, not only are they two cracker teams in both games, but the energy, the hype of where oh. they're playing, everything they're doing. I think we're going to see some of the most action-packed 30 I, to 40 minutes we've ever seen in a first round. I reckon it'll be origin Yeah, 100%. Speed. And I reckon, they, I reckon Landy's, like, maybe he didn't, but I'm just going to make a guess here. <laughs> I honestly reckon that he kind of would have said to the refs, ref it like Origin. Surely. Come on. Come on, man. You go into America, do put the whistle away. Put it away. <laughs> and if some if hits slip this. up, hits slip up, just like. Yeah, let it go. No one cares. No one, like, not for this game. Not <laughs> yeah. for this game. When we get back to Australia, we can, you know, go back to, oh, yeah, your little <laughs> love tap, you're, you know. But, you know, over there, I think you've just got to go like, like a grand final, like Origin, because you want the best product on show. Mm. The only thing about the Roosters is I feel like. And, you know, you could argue that Storm are in this phase a little bit. Now, these are teams that have been at the top, generational, like they've, had, they've got dynasties, generational mm. success, but they start to, when they're not at the top consistently winning, I feel like they lose that ability to just put teams away. Yeah. You know, that like edge Killer instinct that just, almost. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then you start to watch these teams like a Penrith and you're like, yeah, something could be happening in the game, but you just know they're going to get it done. Yeah. That was Melbourne for 10 years. Yeah. I've, I just haven't seen that from the Roosters for a long time where it's just like, nah, you just know that they're going to kick when they need to and put teams away. Almost that like ruthless ability to put yeah. a team away. It's a good point. You it's know? a good point. Really, and it's only been for one year, Broncos are really good at that yeah. where they were just, the last 20 but just go just, mental. It's just like confidence. Yeah. These guys, are, they're having fun. Yeah, and they just almost, they almost know they're better. Mm. Penrith, for sure, they are like, if we stay in this game long enough, we will win it. That's the thing that I feel like might favour what you're saying with the Bronx is like net right now, round one, do they just come back in with the energy and the confidence and mm. that gets them through, you know? Yeah. I do I do see the Roosters having a somewhat decent year though. Like just look at their team on it's paper. It's crazy. ridiculous. Bro, Connor Watson and uh, Angus Crichton and Egan Butcher didn't make the side. That's, <laughs> That's craziness, bro. That's craziness. Um, all right, that is the Packer Up, boys. Oh, also, a reminder... A reminder that Justin Olam's hit on Zach Lomax was our power play of the week. Thanks to LDV. And also, also, uh, don't forget, we've got some, still got some could-be-anything shirts on bloke.shop. Grab a case of bloke beer. Rugby league is back. There's only one beer to drink, and it's bloke beer. Uh, we're in every celebration. It's IJ Plus Liquor, Bottolo, Porter's Liquor. Um, and also, what's your if you're in the Newey area, what's your airlocker? Well, we have 30 across the country now, bro. So Holy! Get on, get, get on the gram. Get on Google, search for your local airlocker. Have they got a store locator on airlocker? Yeah, 100%. Well, there you go. Get into, get onto the airlocker website. Check out the um, the store locator and get in there and get amongst it. And look, if you've got a melted candle body, maybe you don't have to have that. <laughs> look, if anymore. you want to be hot, get into airlocker. If and if you you're not it. feeling hot, grab yourself a bloke at a bar beer. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> As usual, go and fuck ourselves. Thank you. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.